Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Hewlett Packard Enterprise Voice of the Customer podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing discussion on IT innovation and how it's making an impact on people's lives. Our next security, innovation, and transformation panel discussion explores how cloud security is rapidly advancing and how enterprises can begin to innovate and prevail over digital disruption by increasingly using cloud-defined security. We'll hear how a secure content collaboration company is removing the notion of boundaries so that businesses can extend further and safer. And we'll hear where the cloud security potential is headed for more transformative benefits. Here to share how security technology leads to many new business innovations, we're joined by Darren Glenister, Chief Technology Officer at Intralinks in Houston. Thank you for being here, Darren. Thanks, Dana. I appreciate the opportunity. We're also here with Chris Steffen, Chief Evangelist for Cloud Security at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Dana. Thanks for having me. Glad you're here. Let's start with you, Darren. What are the top three trends that are driving your need to extend security and preserve trust with your customers? So I think the, the top three for us are speed of business and people being able to do business beyond boundaries and how can they um, enable the business rather than just protect it. I think security in the past has always been how do we shut things down and stop data, but now it's how do we do it securely and how do we perform business outside of the organization, so enabling business. I think the second thing um, we're seeing is compliance. Uh, compliance is a huge issue for uh, most of the major corporations who have to be able to understand where their data is, who has access to it, um, who's using it, and make sure that they can uh, can be completely compliant. And I think the third, third thing is um, primarily around the shift between uh, security inside an organization and outside an organization. There's been a, a fundamental shift for us, and we've seen that data has moved or security has moved from uh, people trusting their own, uh, their own infrastructure versus using a third party who can provide that security and have it a far, far higher standard because that's what they do all day, every day. So I think that security shift from, um, from on-premise to the cloud is a third big driver for us, and we're seeing that in the market. And you seem to be in a unique position to be able to comment on this. Tell us a little bit about Interlinks and what the company does and uh, why security at the edge is uh, part of your core competency. So we're a SaaS provider, and we provide uh, secure collaboration for, uh, for data. So wherever that data is, whether it's inside a corporate or whether it's shared outside. Typically, uh, once people share data outside, whether it's through email or any other method, um, some of the commercial tools out there, they've lost control of that data. So we've got the ability to actually lock that data down, control that, and put the governance and the compliance around that to secure that data and know where the high-value IP is, who has access to it, and then be able to unshare it as well if you need to. Um, in your, if you're in a situation of losing data or need to revoke access to somebody who's left the organization. Mm -hmm. And this is in industries that have uh, security as a paramount concern. So we're talking about financial insurance. Give us a little bit more indication of the type of data we're talking about. Really, it's anybody with high-value IP or um, uh, compliance requirements, so banking, um, finance, uh, healthcare, life sciences, for example, um, manufacturing even, when you're looking at manufacturing overseas and you've got IP going over to China to, to, uh, to manufacture a product, but your plans are also being shared overseas, we're seeing a lot of companies now are saying, how do we protect those plans and I, therefore protect our IP? Now, Interlinks uh, seems to have been ahead of the curve, Chris, a little bit, uh, recognizing how cloud can be an enabler for security. But we're starting to see a shift in the market, at least I certainly am. In the last uh, six months or so, companies are saying, wow, maybe security is the reason why I don't go to the cloud. They're now saying security is the reason I am going to the cloud. They can do security better than I can. What's happened in six months that made that flip? Yeah, I, I don't really know exactly what's happened, but you're absolutely right. That flip is going on, right? And the, we've done a lot of research recently and shown that um, when you're looking at inherent barriers to going to a cloud solution, that security and compliance considerations are always right there at the top. We commissioned a study through 451 Research, and we kind of knew that's what was going on, but they sure nailed it right on the head saying, yep, one and two, security and compliance right there. Um, the, the reality, though, is that I think that 
um, C table executives, IT managers, those types, they're really starting to look at the massive burden of security and hoping to find help somewhere, right? They, they can look at a provider like Interlinks, they can look at a provider like HPE and say, how can we help, how can they help us meet our security requirements? They can't just third party their security requirements away, that's not going to cut it with nearly all the regulators that are out there. But there, we have solutions. HPE has a solution. Um, Interlinks has solutions. A lot of third-party providers have solutions that will help the, the customer mitigate some of those concerns, address some of those concerns so those guys can actually sleep at night. Now, we're hearing so much about digital disruption in so many industries, and we're hearing about why um, I can't wait. I need to be agile to change in my business model to appeal to my customers to improve their user experience. It seems that security concerns have been a governor on that, a limiter. Uh, well, we can't do this because blank security issue arises. It seems to me a huge benefit when you can come to them and say, we're going to allow you to be agile, we're going to allow you to fight back against disruption because security can, in fact, be managed. How far are we along the lines of, uh, of really converting this notion of uh, disruption as in, in security into an enabler when you go to the cloud? So the biggest thing for most organizations is that large and it's very difficult to transform just the systems, the legacy systems, the uh, processes that are in place. So it's very, very difficult for organizations to change quickly. So to actually drive that, they have to look at alternatives, and that's why a lot of people are moving to the cloud, and I think that's actually driving the move to the cloud is can we quickly enable the business? Can we quickly provide those solutions rather than having to spend 18 months going through and trying to change our process and spend millions of dollars doing it? So I think that enablement of the business is actually driving the need to go to the cloud and obviously the drive, the drive to have security around that. And I think you'll find, to Chris's point a few moments ago, um, you know, not all vendors are the same. Yeah, some some vendors are in the cloud, um, and they're not as secure as others. So I think people are looking for trusted partners like HPE and Intralinks, and are putting their their trust and their their crown jewels in effect with us because of the security. And uh, that's why we work with HP, HPE because um, they have a similar philosophy around security that we do, and that's important. Yeah, I guess the only thing I would add to that, too, is that security is not a concern of the big business or the small business. It's everybody's concern. And it's one of those things where um, you, you do need to find a trusted provider. You need to find that provider that will not only understand the requirements that you are looking for, but the requirements that you have. The, the, the key, and, and this is my opinion, but when you're taking and looking at your overall compliance infrastructure, pretty good chance that you had to have that compliance for more than a day or two. It's something that you've, it's been iterative. It, it may change, it may grow, whatever. And so when, you, when you're looking at a partner, one of the key components in, that a lot of different providers will start to at least try to do now is so that you don't start at square one again. You don't want to take a migrate to a cloud solution and then have all the compliance work that you've done previously just wiped away. You want a partner that will map those controls, that, that really understands those controls. Uh, Perfect examples in the financial services industry, there's like 10 or 11 regulatory bodies that some of the biggest banks in the world are all have to be compliant with. Well, it's extremely complicated. You can't really expect that big bank one, two, three is going to just throw all that effort away and say, well, we're just going to move to whatever provider and hope for the best. Obviously, it can't be that way. So the key is to take and map those controls, understand those controls, then map those controls to your new environments. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get into a little bit of the how, how this happens. What is it that we can do with security technology, with methodologies, with organization that allows us to go into a cloud, remove this notion of a boundary around your organization, and do it securely? What's the secret sauce, Darren? So one of the things for us being a uh, cloud vendor is that we can protect data outside. So we've got the ability to actually embed the security into the documents wherever documents go. So instead of just having the control of, the, of data at rest within an organization, we've got the ability to actually control it in motion inside and outside the perimeter. So now you've got the ability to control that data. And if you think about sharing with uh, third parties, um, quite often people say, well, we can't share with a third party because we don't have a compliance and we don't have a security around it. Now they can share, they can guarantee that the information is, um, is secure and at rest and in motion. And typically, if you look at most organizations, they have at rest data um, covered. 
there's systems and, and procedures. It's, 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 you know, well, it's child's play, <laughs> relatively yeah. child's play. But uh, that's been covered for many years. But it's that in motion and how do you actually extend working with third parties and working with outside organizations. That's, that's the challenge. Now, it strikes me that we're looking at these capabilities through the lens of security. But isn't it also the case that this enables entirely new innovative activities? When you can control your data, when you can extend where it goes for how long to certain people under certain circumstances, we're applying policies, we're bringing intelligence to a document, to a piece of data, not just securing it, but getting control over it and extending its usefulness. So why would companies not recognize that security first brings larger business benefits that extend for years? I think historically, as I said earlier, security has always been the, no, we, you can't do this, let's stop. And I think if you look in the finance environment, very much it's stop using thumb drives, stop using you know, email, stop using anything rather than here's a solution. So, and, and we're seeing a transition, I think, going back to the comment earlier, about six months. Over the last six months, you're starting to see a transition where people are saying, how do we enable? Not no, it's how do we enable, how do we uh, give people the control that they need? And as a result of that, you see new solutions coming out from, uh, from organizations and how they can impact the bottom line. So behavior modification is always a big part of technology adoption. What is it that we can do, Chris, in the industry to show people that being secure and extending the security uh, to wherever the data is going to go or be gives us much more opportunity for innovation? To me, this is a huge carrot that I don't think people have uh, perhaps uh, fully grokked. Yeah, I, absolutely. And... and the, the reality of it is it's an educational process. One of the things that I've been doing uh, for, for actually quite some time now is trying to educate people. Um, I, I can talk with uh, you know a fellow CISP and we can talk about Diffie-Hillman encryption and I promise that your CEO does not care, okay? And he shouldn't. He shouldn't ever have to care. That's not something that he needs to care about. But he does need to understand TCO, he needs to understand ROI, he needs to be able to go to bed at night understanding that his company is going to be okay when he wakes up in the morning and that his company is secure. And so the, it's an iterative process, it's something that they have to understand. What is cloud security? What does it mean to be uh, to have defense in depth? What does it mean to have a mat uh, mature security policy and vision? Um, those are things that change you know, those are things that really change the attitudinal inherent barriers that you have at a C table that they you then have to get past. I believe that the security practitioners, those those tinfoil hat types, you know, and I, I classify myself as one of those people too. Um, I, I truly believe that they understand truly how data security works and how the cloud can be secured, and they already sleep well at night. Unfortunately, they're not the ones usually writing the checks. So it really is taking and shifting that paradigm of education from the practitioner level, well, they get it, up to the CIO, the CISO, who hopefully understands, and then up to the C-table and the CFO, making certain that they can understand and write that check to understand, yes, going to a cloud solution will allow me to sleep at night. It will allow our company to, uh, to innovate and really take and use security as an enabler to progress the business. So perhaps it's incumbent upon IT and security personnel to start to evangelize inside their companies as to the business benefits of extended security rather than uh, the glass is always yeah. half empty. And, and I, I couldn't agree more, right? And, and it, it's a unique situation, right? It going, you know, and, and having your, again, I'll use the term tinfoil hat people, going and talking to your C table about security, it, it's, they're big and scary and so on and so forth. But the reality of it is, is that it really is critically important that they do understand the value that security brings to an organization. I think, to, to go back to our original conversations, in the last six months, 12 months, I really think that you are see, starting to see that paradigm shift a little bit where C-table executives aren't, aren't satisfied with checkbox compliance, right? They want to understand what it takes to, to be secure. And so they have experts in-house, a lot of folks, and they want to understand that. If not, if they don't have experts in-house, there are third-party partners up there that can provide that amount of education. I think it's important for us to establish that the more secure and expert you are at security, the more of a differentiator you have against your competition. You're going to clean up in your market if you can do it better than they can. It, absolutely. And so using – and, and so let's even bring that a step further back. People have been talking for – 
you know, two decades now about technology as a differentiator, okay, and how you can take and make a technical decision or, or embrace and exploit technology to be the differentiator in your vertical, in your segment, so on and so forth. Um, the credit reporting agency that I worked for a long time ago, they were one of those innovators, right? And we thought, people thought we were nuts doing some of the stuff that we were doing. And years later, everybody's doing the same thing now. It really can set those things. Well, security is that new frontier, right? If you can take and prove that you are more secure than the next guy and that your customer data is more secure than the next guy and that you are willing to protect your customers more than the next guy, it, it, maybe it's not something you're putting on billboards, but people know, right? Do, do you take and go to retailer A because they've had a credit card breach or do you decide to go to retailer B? I, I'd love to say that's a straw man. It's not a straw man. Talk to Target, talk to Home Depot, talk to some of these these big, big box stores that have had breaches and ask how their numbers looked after they had to announce that they had a breach. Right. Uh, Darren, let's go to some examples. Maybe you can think of an example of uh, in Interlinks, and I know you can't always name names, of a security capability that became a business differentiator or enabler. So one of the biggest things is if you think around banks at the moment where they're working with customers, and I think the drive for security, um, security people have always known about security and how they can enable and protect the business. But what's happening is the customers are now demanding, because media is blowing up all of the cyber um, uh, crimes and threats and, and hacks, and what's happening is the consumer is now saying, we need our data to be protected. Um, perfect example is uh, uh, my daughter was applying for a credit card recently and she's going off to college and they asked can you send your um, a copy of your um, passport your social security card and your driver's license to us via email and she looked at me and said what do you think and it's like no why would you so people are actually voted and saying i'm not going to do business with that organization so if you look in the finance organizations now finance uh, banks and uh, uh, credit card companies they're now looking at how can we engage with the customer and show that we're being secure and protecting their data to enable new capabilities like loan applications or credit card applications and protect the customer's data because customers can vote with their feet and choose not to do business with you. So it's becoming a business enabler to say we are protecting your data and we have your concerns at heart. And it's not to say that that information shouldn't be made available to a credit card or an agency that's ascertaining credit, but you certainly wouldn't do it through email. Absolutely, because email's uh, the biggest sharing tool on the planet, but it's also one of the most insecure tools on the planet. So why would you trust your data um, via email? Yeah, we, we, I, we've talked about, uh, you know, security awareness and security awareness cultures and security awareness programs, right? And so if you have a, a vendor management program and you're, you're subject to a vendor management from you know, some other entity, one of the things they almost always request is, do you have a security awareness program? And I think there was a point, you know, even five, six, seven years ago, people looked at that as drudgery. It's the same thing as all the other nonsensical HR trainings that you have to look at. And and it, maybe to some extent it still is, but the reality is, is when I have given those programs before, people are actually excited. Not only because you you get the opportunity to understand security from a business perspective, but a good security professional will then apply that to, hey, by the way, your email is not secure here, but your email is not secure at home too. Don't be stupid here, but don't be stupid there either, okay? We're going to fix the router passwords here. You don't need to worry about that, but you have a home router. Change the default password. Those sound like very, very simple, straightforward things, but when you share that with your employees and you build that culture, not only do you have more secure employees, but then the culture of your business and the culture of security changes. In effect, what's happening is that you're finally beginning to see that translate into stuff going on outside of corporate America, right? People are expecting to have uh, information security parameters around the businesses that they, they do business with. I mean, be it from, again, the big box store to the banks to the hospitals to everybody. And, and so it really is starting to translate. Yeah. Security is a culture. Um, I look at a lot of companies who do once a year uh, certification or attestation and it's an online test and people click through it and may, some may have a test at the end and they answer it and answer the questions and that's it, they're done. But it's not, it's got to be a year-round day-to-day culture of your organization, understanding the implications of security and the risk associated with that. And if you don't do that, if you don't embed that culture, then it becomes a one-time entity and your security is as secure as you know, 
once a year. Yeah. Well, we were, we were talking about it before we started. And one of the things, I, I'm a firm believer in security awareness. And one of the things that I've always done is taken advantage of these pretend Hallmark holidays, right? And, and the latest one was, was Star Wars Day. And so everybody, I say everybody, nearly everybody has seen Star Wars or certainly heard of Star Wars at some point or another. Can't even go into a store these days without hearing about it. But for Star Wars Day, I, I literally created the blog to talk about how information security failures led to the downfall of the Galactic Empire. And, and it, it was a fun blog. It wasn't you know, supposed to be deadly serious, so on and so forth. But the kicker is, is that we talked about key security, information security points. And you use that holiday to get people engaged with what's going on, educate them on some key concepts of information security, and accidentally, oh my goodness, they're learning. And that learning then comes to the next blog that you do. And maybe they pay a little bit more attention to it. And maybe they pay attention to somebody piggybacking through the door. And maybe they pay attention to not putting something in an email and, and so on and so forth. And it's the little iterative thing. It's not going to happen overnight. But it, it, and it sounds silly talking about information security failures in Star Wars. But those are the kind of things that engage people and make people understand more about information security topics. Before we sign off, <clears throat> let's put on our little tin hat with a, with a crystal ball in front. And if we've flipped in the last six months or so and people see the cloud is inherently more secure and they want to partner with their cloud provider to do security better, let's go out a year or two. Um, how impactful will this flip be? What are the uh, implications, if you will, when we think about this and we take into consideration the, what it really means when people think the cloud is the way to go and be secure as a company uh, doing anything in, in, on the Internet? Yeah, I, m the one that immediately comes to mind for me is that, and, and I know that Interlinks is actually already starting to do some of this too, is you're going to see niche cloud. And, and by niche cloud, I mean you, you have a let's just take some random regulatory body that is applicable to a certain segment of business. Maybe they can't go to that, maybe they can't go to a general public cloud because they are regulated in a way that's not really possible. What you're going to see is a cloud service that basically says, hey, we get it, we love your type, we're going to create a cloud. Maybe it might cost you a little bit more to take and do it, but we understand from a compliance perspective the, the hells that you're going through, and we want to help you, and our cloud is designed specifically to address your concerns. When you have niche cloud, all of a sudden it opens up, you know, when you're, you talk about your biggest inherent barriers, okay? We've already talked about security, compliance is another one, and compliance is a big fat ugly, right? And so if you have a cloud provider that's willing to take, maybe even assume some of the liability that comes with moving to their cloud, they're the winners. So let's talk 12, 24 months from now. I'm telling you that's going to be happening. All right, we'll check back on that. Yep. Uh, Darren, your prediction. I would say you're going to see a shift, and I've already seen this, and Chris will probably see this as well, a shift from discussions around um, security to transformation. Yep. I think you will definitely see security now transforming business, enabling businesses to do things and interact with their customers that they've never done before, and you'll see that impact in two ways. One is going to be new business opportunities, so revenue coming in, but it's also going to be streamlining the internal processes, so making things easier to do internally. And I think you'll see a transformation of the business inside and outside, and that's going to drive a lot of new opportunities and new capabilities uh, and innovations we've never seen before. Couldn't agree more. Very good. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. We've been discussing how cloud security is rapidly advancing and how enterprises can begin to innovate to prevail over digital disruption by increasingly using cloud-defined security. And we've seen how a secure content collaboration company, Interlinks, is removing the notion of boundaries so businesses can extend further and safer, and in fact, it enables entirely new business activities. So please join me in thanking our panel. We've been here with Darren Glenister, the Chief Technology Officer at Interlinks. Thank you, Darren. Thanks, appreciate it, Dana, and uh, it's been good talking with, with you and with Chris. And yes, we've been here with Chris Steffen, the Chief Evangelist for Cloud Security at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Dan. It's been a great conversation. And I'd like to thank our audience as well for joining us for this Hewlett Packard Enterprise Voice of the Customer Security Transformation Discussion. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at InterArbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing series of HPE sponsored discussions. Thanks again for listening and do come back next time.